Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and this is episode 17, coming up next. All right. Oh. <laughs> this has become a passion of mine recently. Um, so again, recap, I'm in the SBC and I'm an SBC pastor of a small church. And um, like many, many thousands of other guys, bivocational or full-time or whatever, we got to write our own sermons, right? And each congregation is a little different. Each body needs something different, right? Not We're not all made the same, men and women, boys and girls, different ethnicities, different groups, different parts of the world. Your DNA is a little different physically, so you might be able to eat something that someone else might not be able to eat. You might be able to thrive on more protein versus more fat versus more carbs, uh, more drink, drink more water, less water, how your blood type is. We're so complex as human beings, okay? And... Let's remember that the Bible is compares the body, the church, to the eyes and the ears and the hands and the feet and so on. And not everybody's an eye. Not everybody's an ear. You know, if 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 the, everybody was an eye, where would the hearing come? And so on. Paul says, and so we can understand that Paul, through the Spirit, is making many analogies to the physical body, to the body of Christ, and of course, local bodies in particular, local bodies in particular of local churches. And so because of all that, church membership's important. Being known by your pastor, by your leaders, uh, and the leaders knowing them, and, and, and the, the congregation knowing the leaders, and so on, the pastors, the deacons, the elders, and so on, these, these things matter. And we're going to watch a clip here of our favorite, maybe most popular, most trending, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, pastor at the moment here in July of 2021. Go ahead. Hours, I, to be very honest, I used to lie. I used to tell people, you know, 24, 24 hours of sermon, you know, uh, if you're, you can, you can spend too much time. You, you're dorking around doing something else with your head, but, but I actual, and by the way, let me say this too, when you're younger, it's going to take longer, right? The older you get, and it's not that you're pulling up old stuff, but there is a resource of material. Um, and, and there's connectivity there that, that will come. Uh, but I would say eight to 10 hours average, eight to 10 hours. And not all of that is some of this exegetical work getting in the dirt. Some of it is organizing the thought. This isn't a discernment blog per se. Okay, we all should have discernment as Christians. And a lot of times, you know, the kind of highfalutin guys or the guys who want to be big Eva elites or devotees kind of mock those, you know, Reformation Charlotte, Protestia, Pulpin and Pen. And a lot of times they're very polemical and they're 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 too much. I don't agree with a lot of what they say. But I also don't agree with a lot, if not most, of what the Gospel Coalition says. Um Again, we all have our own opinions, right? But we should all have those opinions derived from Christ. Now, those opinions and ideas do come, uh, in some sense, from our experience, right? And where we're from and where we where we were born and when we were born and so on, who we're married to and all the rest. But we should always be focused on the Lord Jesus. Now here, this video, this little tiny clip, it's not plagiarism, right? That's good. Thanks, Lytton. Thanks, Dr. Lytton. But... Here, here, here's the allegations that are very out there, right? And I'm sure maybe you've already seen some of my other videos. Those are up here. Um, or maybe it's here. I can't remember which side it is. Plagiarism and then lying about it in the sense of pretending speaking in the first person when it's not the first person. Talking about illustrations that were not your own and so on. And... Then tricking your congregation, passing that off to your wife, preaching, which obviously is against uh, the pastoral epistles, the Baptist faith and message 2000, uh, and then having the aberrant form of the Trinity. I mean, you've got three strikes, you're out. I mean, Dr. Lytton, you need to resign. You really do. You should step down from your church. You should definitely step down from the, the, the SBC presidency. Maybe, like, maybe you don't step down from your pastorate, maybe, 
uh, but you have a time of reflection and you meet with godly men who are not your normal and you go and confess your sin and you acknowledge it, not just privately, but publicly because the sin is very public. Um, interesting though, we can see that a lot of these sermons may not actually have, have even been stolen from one Tim Keller or J.D. Greer, and I'm sure others. But as some, has, have, some have mentioned, Rick Warren has had this for a long time. Oh, here's the thing. Go preach my sermon. You know, here's, a, here's an outline. Here's illustrations and so on. But Docent Research Group, which I'll probably do a video on at some point, um, is actually seemingly what's going on. Is this kind of this collective of people who are very leftist, very commie-based, um, Democrat run, supposedly. Again, I, that's that's just what people say. So I'm not going to operate too much on that. But at minimum, even if they're all God fearing people who love Jesus and love the Bible and all the rest, in a historical sense, not like oh I love these words and I'm going to use it for this social activism or something, but actually loving the author of those words. Even if that's all the case, even if they're super conservative and they're great people. Uh, and they're not supporting radical agendas and all the rest. Say they're not. Say they're all that way, orthodox to the core. You're still providing sermons. And in fact, I went on their website, and I don't. I'll, I'll, I'll just say this last part about Docent and move on. But it says over a million people hear our sermons every week. A million people don't hear my sermons. A million people don't hear John MacArthur's sermons. Mark Dever's sermons. What's going on? Francis Chan or some of these other guys. I mean, these, these guys are way more popular than me, of course, right? They have way more sermons, way more experience, all that. Great, okay. But a million people per week? Are you serious? That means their docent is, is, is filling, helping, quote unquote, many, 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 many pastors, preachers, and the, and the like. Here, Lytton, again, <laughs> back to the content. What does he say? To be honest, I used to lie. So like it is admission. We're 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 out with it now. Not to say you know it's not unnamed sources, as he said with that interview and other places. Oh, kind of danced around it. Well, just oh, just oh, 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 we shall give pause because it's unnamed sources. You're your own source. You're not an unnamed source. You're you. And you said one thing, and he said this, and then he said this, and then you said after this. Even with the same gestures and the same mannerisms and the same you know asking the audience and talking to the audience, like. Really? You, you're so uncreative that you can't even create your own thoughts? But we're still, so, so he used to lie about it, and this is in sermon prep. Now, I used to lie pretty regularly. Uh, before Christ, <laughs> when I was living in sin, when I would go with someone and lie about it, I used to live with my grandma for a while, and I wouldn't tell her where I was going. No way. Now, it's not, you know, there's worse things in the world uh, of where I went anyway. But it wasn't good. And I was lying, which is never good. It's an abomination, right? It's, it's bad. God hates lying. Uh, all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. That's kind of a big deal. Revelation, uh, what was it, 20? 19, 20, 21, something like that. So <sighs> he used to lie about sermon prep. 20 hours, 24 hours a week. That's what he used to say. But the question is, why was he so he wasn't spending that, but then he kind of says, well, you know, when I was younger, it takes longer. And as you get older, you use less. Now it's eight to 10 hours, he says. Eight to 10 hours? That's like a regular day's work. What are you doing the other 30 some odd, 40 some odd hours a week? I mean, he says, dorking around. Oh, he's dorking around. Now, if I'm understanding it correctly, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but at minimum, he's admitting to being a pastor prepping sermons, and old, you know, Susie Q and Bob Smith walk up and say, oh, pastor, your sermons are just so amazing. How do you do it? How long does it take you? I mean, you're here, you're having dinner with us, or you're out writing books, or you're out speaking, or you're, you know, conversing with the community, having quote-unquote dialogue. How do you do it? How do you, how much time do you spend? Well, you know, 20, 24 hours a week usually. Oh, I used to lie. He says, <laughs> and he laughs, he laughs. Are you serious? You're laughing about your sin as a pastor, right? We might laugh about our sin in our BC days, 
Uh, you come to faith as an 18, 25-year-old, 30-year-old, something like that. You understand you're a sinner, and you're like, man, I was a total idiot. Like, my priorities, if we get into it, I got another video, How Jesus Changed Me. Uh, check it out. It's like two minutes, two or three minutes, something like that. But that's part of my testimony. It's very small, but... And you can like laugh at that of just how sinful sin is, how stupid sin is. And yet this guy is saying, no, no, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I'm a pastor. So you're held to a higher standard, right? Lest many of us become teachers. He laughs about sinning, lying. The sin that God is putting cowards and liars in the lake of fire. Like, I <laughs> just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, like, it's, 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 right? I can't, there's no words, really. I mean, obviously, I've had a lot of words. But if you really stop and think about it, I mean, it really does leave me speechless. But now it's eight to ten hours. So you're now, what are you doing the last, the, re, the 40, 30, 40 hours a week the rest of the time? Dorking around, I guess he says. Uh, again, Lytton needs to step down. He really does. There's no way to remove a president in the SBC as far as as far as there's any sort of mechanisms. But I mean, the guy's not even been president officially a month, and there's just thing after thing after thing. And again, I'm not trying to be annoying with the discernment, whatever, right? And I'm not trying to be like, oh, look at this, oh, and all flashing around and everything else. I'm really not. Like, the bride of Christ matters, right? Truth matters. Fidelity, right? Infidelity is like adultery, right? You're being in unfaithful. Fidelity, faithfulness matters. It really does. And our churches are just, I mean, why are we so naive as a church to believe all these people, well, this guy said this, this, and this, and this. We believed the the guys, several of the people who have apostatized, right? Well, because they're genuine, right? Josh Harris, I think is his name, right? Several people. The guy, a couple different musicians. The other guy, Paul something or other. I did a video with him a while back or on him. And we're always like, well, you know, uh, at least the elites, the big Eva guys, you know. Uh, the guys who do the conferences and write the books and all the rest that are influencing everyone else, right? These are the ones that are the trickle-down effect influencing everyone else. Ultimately, we as the church, as the body of Christ, need to influence up, right? You need to bring your pastor and, and, and ask him, what do you think about this? And I, I challenge you and maybe drop a comment below and say, hey, I talked to my pastor. Hey, I, I reached out. I emailed so-and-so. I, I'd be I, just a little bit of accountability. Do that. And uh, it'll give you something to converse about. I'd love to know about it. Because this is how things change. The grassroots, the organic nature of things. This is how it changed. Not throwing a bunch of money at it. Starting some political action committee. And, and all this. And petitioning government and Congress to remove this guy. Or stop this thing. Or disassociate this church. No, 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 no. It's the organic nature of saying we need this to be clean. The, the church needs to be pure. Or as pure as it can be. Because not only for Christ and only for because sin is like a cancer or like a wildfire that spreads and it needs to be stopped before it's raging. And quite frankly, it seems to be raging. I mean, the Lord is really using this to sift the wheat and the tares. But Satan, remember, asked Jesus to sift Peter and the others like wheat. Do you not think that that's happening now? Lest we be so naive to think that that is happening, well, just back then. And, you know, God God is kind of sitting up there. You know, he's got his proverbial feet up on some big billowy cloud. And he's eating, you know, raisinets and popcorn. And he's just kind of watching this big, you know, million foot screen of of the world. And, wow, that's, that stuff's crazy, y'all. Man, you guys seeing this? Talking to Gabriel and, you know, a couple other archangels. And just They're all just kind of sitting there in this big movie theater watching Like, that's not how God is. And we so have been indoctrinated by that. Even if we know it's wrong, we'll still kind of think that way. 
know, heaven's boring. Hell's a cool place. It's where my friends are. But heaven, we gotta, we just float around with harps and clouds, and we're just wearing white. And, uh, okay, that's bored, bored to tears. No, it's not gonna be boring at all. Glory will not be boring. The new heavens and the new earth, there'll be work to do, and it'll be work without labor and and pain, or labor without pain and suffering and tears and so on. And so, anyway, the point is for this that Lytton's lying. He said he lied. He's now still lying about other stuff, and he's now unrepentant, which is not good. This is a Matthew 18 situation, completely. So email your pastor, talk to your pastor, talk to your leaders, talk to your uh, director of missions, even, about this situation. Hey, what do you think about this? Are you going to do something about this? Are you going to call him to resign, and so on? These things are a big deal. They really, really are. And if we don't stand against it, the world will then just look and be like, look at you hypocrites. You guys don't even care about sin. You don't care about sin. Oh, yeah, about babies. You know, that's the big argument. Well, you care about abortion, but you don't care about two-year-olds or old people. Well, we should care about everyone, right? Pro-life in that sense. But, of course, a born person is a lot more safe than an unborn person, at least today. But we should still care about all of them, right? We should still be willing to adopt a two-year-old and not just an unborn baby. But we should be all those things. We should be... uh, offended not just at the aberrant sexuality and all the craziness that's going on with all the alphabets and just want to teach our kids these things and that thing and this theory and all these problems, but we should also be angry at sin. We should also be angry at adultery, angry at divorce, angry at theft, angry at these things, angry at idolatry, right? Because these are the things that God hates because ultimately he knows it's going to destroy us and that's what it's doing. It's not just about like, well, how dare you guys do this to me? No, God's not concerned about him being offended per se. It's for us ultimately, right? And because he's holy, he calls us to be holy. You shall be holy for I am holy, he says. So, Lytton, got to call it quits, man. Got to call it quits. So, Be against the world for the sake of the world because the world is passing away. I'm Richard, and go ahead and like and comment. I'd really appreciate it. It does help help it out, help out the uh, the rhythm thing. That's uh, rhythm a algo re. I can't really speak pig Latin very well. So anyway, take care.